What's up, dearest wonderful people? It's all over here. Welcome back to another video. All right, so this is our first ever skateboarding, true skateboarding movie. We've skated in DC in the past two videos, but this is the first fully skate progression oriented video. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you enjoy this series. This channel is about sharing um, what's going on in my life, and skateboarding is a big part of my life now, so I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So I chose the name Euphoric Skateboarding because euphoria is a word that I kind of overuse. I say, have a euphoric day to my friends and whatnot. But euphoria actually means like true happiness. You can't even comprehend that it's reality. But truly, one of the moments when I actually feel true euphoria is when I'm skateboarding. Skateboarding takes me into a state of bliss and peace and serenity. So this is euphoric skateboarding. And why in the intro sequence did I just have a bunch of clips of falling, no actual successful tricks being done? Because a big part of skateboarding is falling and getting back up and being resilient and trying a trick over and over again until you land it. So that intro kind of represents that. But we're going to go back, harken back to the day of June 26th, 2018, which is when I first took a step on a skateboard. Actually, it wasn't a real skateboard. It was a penny board. And my friend Luke taught me how to just cruise. He's not big into tricks, but he's just, he's really good at cruising. So he taught me the basics, the fundamentals. And at first, it felt so weird. I had no idea what my feet were doing. I feel like I'm, when I go like that, I just have no control of my balance. How do, I, I don't get it. Yeah, you don't want to have your foot in the very center. Mm -hmm. You want to keep it up front. I mean, pushing just looks so fun. It feels like I have no balance. Like when I'm like that, I just, it's gonna flexing on the unskilled. And then it started to cross my mind, maybe there are just some people who can't skate. <laughs> So many skaters make skateboarding look so easy, and I just, I felt no control. I felt zero control, not even progression, I felt zero control. So I just thought maybe skateboarding is a skill that only some people have, and maybe I'm just not that person. But no, that's not factual. I'm not amazing, but I've progressed a lot. And if you if you care about something, and I care about care a lot about skateboarding, if you set your mind to it and practice, you will improve. I got a, got a long way to go. Wow, I'm amazing. Then a couple weeks later, I took my first actual step on an actual real skateboard, and I start to feel a little bit better on it. Because a penny board is much smaller, you don't have as much control or surface area where you can put your feet, but a skateboard has much more surface area. So I started to feel a little bit more comfortable cruising and pushing around, but I still felt kind of unstable, or if I leaned too far to one side, that would completely throw me off, but that just means practice more. I got, I landed it! Oh, that was so close. Whoa! So at this point, I felt like I kind of had the basics of cruising down, maybe not in the bag, but I understood it well enough to where I could start working on tricks. So one of the most basic tricks, or maybe not the most basic trick, but it came kind of easily to me, it's called the caveman, and it's where you jump up and throw the board under your feet. It's pretty easy to do just standing stationary, so getting a caveman while moving, that was a tricky part for me. Standing one is much easier because I know where I am and I know where I want the board to go. But when I'm moving, the board is just gonna it will go wherever it wants. Hard to hard to measure. Something that I really dislike about skateboards is that, say on a ripstick, when you lose when you lose your control over your board, because it only has two wheels, 
it just stops. It needs human control to keep its momentum. But this, because it has four wheels, if you, if you lose your control, it just keeps on going. So let's say when you're pushing, right? When you're pushing, if you leave the, your back foot on the ground for too long, the board doesn't stop, it just keeps on going, and you start to rip your crotch in half. A really easy fix to this is just to do tricks on grass because you can still move pretty well, but the board isn't gonna roll away from you too much. And it's so cool how random people, people you don't even know, just strangers are so supportive. So then there was this random guy walking by. Trying to stick your lander? Yeah, trying at least. Yeah, you keep trying, man. Thank you. And then my attempt right after he talked to me, that's when I landed it. So I thought that was kind of cool. It's like our tiny conversation had the power to have me land the trick. I, that's pretty cool. Might have just been coincidence, but I like to think of it that way. So today, the agenda, the plan, um, we are going to work on our tail grab caveman, which is instead of how I did it uh, day two and day one, grabbing it from the nose and then sliding the board under my feet, um, instead of grabbing it, grabbing it from the tail. Here we are at the skate park. Um, first time actually at a skate park. I've been skateboarding for about a month. Um, this is my first time at a skate park. It's harder than I thought it would be, but once I adjusted my standards, I'm not as terrible as I thought I would be with that level of difficulty. And here's my friend Tadek. What a legend. Just roasting hot. And we're out of water and the water fountains are broken, so we need to find some, some hydration soon or else I actually think, I actually think we're gonna pass out here. Tadek. How, how, how was the skateboarding adventure? Phenomenal. Phenomenal? We, we lost ourselves like five times. <laughs> but you heard, it here, made it. you heard it here first, folks. It was phenomenal. So here is where Tadek and I are trying to just circle the bowl. Very simple concept, but it takes quite a bit of technique. And when I first started working on it, I was so, I was so surprised by how difficult it is because you see um, advanced skaters zooming around in bowls. So I just thought, oh, you just go around it. But no, there's, there's a lot of technique thinking about the timing of when you turn, if you have to kick turn at all, or you just carve, um, and how much you bend your knees. And that's something I didn't realize. You really need to bend your knees more than you think you do because that just allows you to move better around the bowl. Oh, the bowl's fun. So finally just got a circle around the bowl. That's not that insane, but um, it was an accomplishment. It was a stepping stone to more tricks. So I'm here at the skate park with my friend Tadek. Tadek, get up here. <sighs> what up, man? And we're just gonna cruise around and have fun. <laughs> oh my god. It looks so lame, honestly, but it's actually very difficult. It looks so lame, but it's not that easy. Yeah, it really is. So It's even more difficult than going in the bowl because you have to ride switch, which means riding with your opposite foot forward. Do something cool. So then it crossed my mind, all over, let's try dropping in. Seems kind of scary, seems daunting, seems like a really big step, but it felt like a step that I was ready to take. First drop in. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but I'll try. Lean into it. You gotta lean into it. That's basically it, right? <laughs> 
How? Your first time dropping in, it's gonna feel like you're leaning forward way too much, but trust me, you need to lean in more. Stomp your front foot forward and lean forward. Truly commit. Pretend that you want to dive into the ground because the ground underneath your feet is changing from this angle to this angle. So if you just keep on gliding forward, your board is gonna stay like this unless you lean forward and commit to stomping your nose down. Then it's gonna go with the, with the ramp. Final trick that I tried that day was dropping in on a little bit higher drop in. It was a little bit steeper because it had coping, which is that black bar on the top of a ramp. I think it was about three or four feet. Sounds like nothing, but it was so scary standing at the top of that uh, little bowl. Even though I knew I knew how to drop in, it was still difficult to get the fear out of my head and just go for it. But if you keep that fear in your mind, it's gonna kind of prevent you from landing the trick. If you get that fear out of your mind and just focus and block out everything around you, then you're more likely to land the trick. So on my first attempt, I just decided to commit and drop in. So that was a little drop in progression over the last few months. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. That is the first Euphoric Skateboarding episode. Now I want to give a big thanks to Luke, Davis, Aiden, Isla, and Todic, which were my fellow skateboarding uh, friends who I skated with in this video. I didn't get footage of all of them, but uh, they are in existence and I did have fun skating with them. So I hope you liked the video. Hope it maybe motivates you to go try skateboarding. Or maybe not skateboarding, try something that you've been wanting to try. And if you know me in person or you go to my school and you've been wanting to try skateboarding, I'm happy to teach you. We go out skating sometime. Oh, and don't forget, helmet gang. Always helmet gang. Your brain is important. I like my brain when it's inside of my skull as opposed to on the sidewalk. Think about it. Alright, that's it for episode one. Peace out, respect your elders, have a euphoric rest of your day, and I'll see you in euphoric skateboarding episode two. Bye-bye.